Welcome to this quick introduction to about the find the rename 11. In this part, we will cover the basic operation of the program. As you can see, we have two sections here. On the right is the preview table where you can add the files and folders that you want to rename. First, we will drag and drop in a folder and then a few image files from a holiday a long time ago, just so that we can have something to work with. As you can see in the left column, the current name column, we can see the names of the files as they are now. In the right, change to column, we can preview the names as they will be after we finish renaming them. On the left side, we can set all the parameters that decide what those new names will be. The image part, for instance, comes from the prefix text field over here. As soon as I start typing something into this text field, the change is previewed on the right. This instant preview feature makes it easy to see what you are doing and really makes dialing in the right name much less error prone. Of course, adding text to the beginning does not fit our files very well. So let's select replace text at the beginning instead. So perhaps you want to replace the DSC part with something more meaningful. These are holiday shots, so let's type holiday pictures. Preview allows me to see that it might be nice to have a space between the name and the sequence number. So this is the very basic operation of the tool. You can add the files that you want to rename in the preview table on the right, and then you dial in your settings on the left. Once you are happy with your settings, you just click the Perform Renames button. As you can see, we get a quick confirmation dialog that shows us the content of the file. The old name, the new name, and the file's location on the disk. I'm happy with all the settings and I don't want to confirm each rename individually, so I click on Rename All. You can see that all the file names have been changed correctly and the better file rename is ready to apply further renaming actions if you wish. We will wrap up this introductory video with a more detailed look at the process section because this unlocks some powerful options. In some situations we are dealing not with a few individual files but with large numbers of files within a single folder or even within quite deep folder hierarchies. In these situations it doesn't make sense to drag all the files in individually and we simply drag the root folder, also known as the parent folder, into the preview and use the subfolders and their contents checkbox. In the rest of this video, I'll demonstrate how this works in practice. When I come back to the default action, produce sequence number list, we can see a little problem. You remember that folder that I dragged into the preview first. As you can see, the folder will also get a sequence number when we clearly just wanted to give our images new names. We can correct this by simply unticking the folder's checkbox so that only files get renamed. You'll notice that the folder has now disappeared from the preview, but of course the folder itself still exists in the finder and on the file system. Ticking the checkbox back on brings it back. If we only want to rename folders, we can untick the file checkbox, and that will make all the files disappear from the preview. I've prepared a small folder hierarchy to demonstrate how the subfolders and their contents checkbox works, but first we need to get rid of the currently selected items. We do this simply by clicking on the clear list button. Now let's have a quick look at the sample folder hierarchy that I have created. We have a top folder called parent folder that contains a subfolder called subfolder. Both the parent folder and the subfolder contain one file each. Let's see what happens when we drag this into a better finder rename. At first we only see the parent folder, because that's the only item that we have dragged in. Now observe what happens when I tick the subfolders and their contents checkbox. Now I have selected all the files and folders in the file hierarchy to get renamed. We can still limit the rename to just the folders by unticking files, or vice versa. And that brings us to the end of this introductory video. I hope you have found it to be useful. Please subscribe for more tutorials about the better find a rename and leave a comment if you want to see a video about a particular topic. Thanks for watching.